never return. No crit. Pride. No crit. <laughs> it's time to pay the price. It's time. Hello, Internet! Wasn't that intro epic? Hmm. If you're not in the loop, I've entered yet another Honkai Star tournament. So, yeah, massive thanks to the host, Tameus, the casters, Vulcan, and Grimro, and of course, all the participants involved. I have them linked in the description down below. Last time, I entered with Win Dan Heg, and we saw him tragically lose a 20 because he just didn't crit. Plus, I also sucked. I was so frustrated, which is why I vowed to bring home a victory with Dan Heg, even if it meant I used the Bible version. After his loss, we have went into our training arc, and this is the end. And it is time to win. For this 20, I'm partnered with Destiny, which also has a Mega Brain. The draft starts with us grabbing my Dan Heg. You know how I no crit the last time, right? So this time I gave Dale 92.5 crit rate. <laughs> yeah. How about you try and miss a crit now? <laughs> the draft continues with Bronya and Luocha. After trading arc, Bronya is at a whopping 152 speed on a win set. She even has a one lag set as well. And this is just so we can use less cycles since we advance our action ever so slightly more than a normal build. Luocha Post training arc kind of only has Pentacle set for Dill. I didn't really work on it to be honest, but it's gonna work. To end our draft is a Hanya. Post training arc 177 speed, a messenger, and even a wand wax set as well. I'm going to clear quickly. Life on the line. And here we go, Dan Hang. Just so happens we're up against Yan Cheng, so this is lore accurate. Not to mention the opposition just played against the stage, so yeah, it's literally perfect, dude. Thanks to the wand wax set, my harmony characters are faster than even the dang trotter. The entire idea here is to land my burden with Hanya, push Dill every moment I get, and have him plow the two enemies from below. My damage is about 200k, and you'll notice that it's always around 200k. Yeah, try missing a crit now, why don't you? Hmm? Luocho was perfect for me in this team, where his only job is to use basics and a heal. With his Pentacoli set, it does help Dill that little bit more. Here's where the magic starts. Brian got a time for me to get the ultimate. Since I have the win set, I am able to advance myself forward. This makes it enough for her to get a 3 cycle turn 1 while spamming her skills non-stop. I even have a dance 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 like on Hanya, so I advance my team forward even more. In a perfect world, I'd just have Dill take a turn before Branya, but I wouldn't have enough skill points anyway, so this works perfectly bad. Here is where I question life. You'll notice that I stall in this fight a lot. Even the casters were like, it's just taking time to decide. If you're wondering, I was figuring out Victoria's secret here, calculating every possible outcome like Dr. Strange. The question was, should I use my outright after this? I'm lazy to explain, so I'll always simplify it. If I change is me basically into his ult, what happens is my, my talent stacks will still be on me, so my ult will hurt a lot. In exchange, however, my next 3 basic wouldn't hurt as much since I don't keep my stacks for my next turn. But in this scenario, I have to use his ult anyway now in order to break the wood guy or else he'll just heal up. The annoying part is I will literally be doing less damage, but I have to do it to break the wood guy, so it will be all up to luck. Will I be able to kill them in the end, though? Thankfully, with the high crit rate, I was still able to fit just about enough damage for the kill. This is why I needed to have high crit rate, man. If any miscrits would have happened, I might just not have enough damage. Yeah, Dan, hey, why don't you no crit now, huh? I dare you. With the win set and dance, 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 bro, got into the cycle by two action value. We push Jill again, and they are in killing range, so we have them. A zero cycle clear. Yeah, dude, how about you no crit again, you swine? Honestly, guys, this is partly personal grudge. Anyways, we now have our final challenge against the loser. My skill points do not look too good. This is mainly because I didn't activate Bronya's E1 at the very first turn early, but I did kind of activate it every other time so I can't complain, but ideally I want to activate it every time it's possible. With Hanya taking the turn, I definitely want her to E up, so I did. Yanjin gets it sorted, and here's where I can showcase the world's slowest decision making. Bronya can use her E or use her basic here. You can see the amount of doubt I have in myself. I went for the basic in the end and proceeded to do a Doctor Strange again. Even even Vulcan was like, so I'm not too sure whether he's thinking about- Oh, I'll take my sweet time, because I need this post-training on victory. Vimro would add by saying, Really taking his time here? <laughs> Okay, maybe I didn't have to think about this crud too much with Luocha. I am attacked by Yanching and got a lot of ultimates up here. Now, question for you. Would you use all your ulti here? But I have a win set on Bronya and a DDD on Hanya. I also just realized they both have Ya in their name, so I'm calling them Yaya. Yeah, I don't know if my Yaya should ult right now. I decided to only ult with Hanya, so Dil would have a massive action advance here, getting him into the first cycle. I decided to use an E with Bronya instead of ulting to maximize the damage I can do. It's all for naught if I can't kill him in the end. I even activated her E1, which is great. 
great, but I would have had enough if I ulted with Dill anyway on a burden debuff, right? I then ulted with Raya. Through her win set, she cuts in front of Yancheng and just so happens to be in a position for another three-turn cycle. I finally stopped stalling and dunked in his ulti. Just enough to kill the swords, which is huge. Dill goes ahead and drill Yancheng from below. And we did the most perfect number I've ever seen from a Dill nuke. I then farm some skill points and Raya takes her turn. And well, I took my sweet time here. All the text that you're seeing right now is the things I had in mind. <laughs> It's kind of a lot. I ended up hitting the trotter, so to explain this, Yanching only has one burden left, so I want them for Danheng's damage, right? I also want his skill points, so I, I basic the trotter. Bronya did get frozen, but through mega rate calculations, she will drop below 50% health after she takes the freeze damage, so Luocha will heal her and cleanse the freeze. This would not be possible if Yanching decided to spread the damage even a little bit differently. Now do you know why I saw that much, man? There's a lot of stuff to think about. Dill has a turn here, and we nuke. I am not going to miss a crit, little bro. Since we advance her action that much, she will have her third turn in this cycle if I do a basic with Branya here. This is how we're gonna obtain victory. The fight went on with me doing mostly the standard plays. Haya got hit enough times and gained enough for ulti here. That means we add to our final dance as dance enough to get Dill and Branya the turn. But guys, this is the moment of truth. You would think it's game over, but Yanching has 15% health left. Burden has already ran out. I don't think Dill can do enough, man. I even had Luwoshi use the final embers of my team to take 1% health off of him. 14% health left means 113k damage is what I need to win. And here it is. We have done it. A one cycle clear. Now that we've done all we can, we're up against EO for the Yanching side. He was using Blade, which is still a very respectable 5 star DPS. Since Blade clowned on Yanching in the lore, we'll have to see if he can clown on him in game. Dan Heng's fate will lie on EO's hands. And what do you know? Blade did clown on Yanching and shat on him, but EO did take two extra cycles to do it. I guess Blade wanted to torture Yanching for longer. It is lore accurate. With a two cycle advantage, all Destiny has to do is complete her run with a one cycle of difference compared to her opponent. Gotcha smack. Smack got a very strong two cycle clear against one of the toughest boss to fight against. And with that, all is up to destiny. Some whole people saw us as rivals before when I lost every single time, but yeah, I think I'm more like a father to a predator. Anyways though, this time as partners, she did her magic and got a one cycle clear. And with that, Team Moondago has achieved victory. We did it guys. Dan had got his first win. It was a long and arduous road. But we have reached the finish line. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. I'll show you all the stats and stuff right now, but yeah, Dan Heng has finally completed his story. He finally got the W. But beyond that is a tingling bitter taste. He did win, but it was in Bybitter, not Winhag. This can only mean one thing. The training arc shall continue, and one day we will take the win without our Super Saiyan power. That will be all for now. Thank you so much for having me in the 20, and yeah, I quite enjoyed it. Take care.